All right, so welcome back to the Rising Empires Weekly number 14. We've got the War Chief Club for this week, and we've got Divine DFP up against Matisse. Divine DFP on HRE, and Matisse on Rus. This is game number two in their best of three series for the winner's final. The winner of this Going to head straight through the grand final, the loser going to have to fight their way through the loser's bracket in the last chance eliminations. And so, sorry, my chair's just playing up. DFP taking game number one in an English mirror on Gorge. Game number two here on High View, my favourite map. <laughs> Our Rus player, going for that early cabin of course, and house and lumber camp, all with the one villager I do like this, very vill efficient. HRE player, going for lots of early gold, and powering the food gatherers, not looking to gather any early wood. This Archon Chapel, these days, is a drop-off point. And so, which is, has the two scouts, doesn't look to have a third on the way. Just wants that little gold trickle, because it'll really pay for itself. So it looks like DFP, two scouts, pretty normal for anyone playing into Rus, just because it means you can really deny both the amount of sheep they get and try and kill all the uh, hunter balls on the map. It's DFP, it's already cleared out the ones over his side by the look of it. Well, it is. Don't be scared to find his huntables. I'm gonna try and find any wolves. It looks like DFP has one over here. DFP's gonna to want to try and kill this. Matiz is gonna to want to try and steal it back because he can get 25 gold out of it. While DFP really just looking to deny that gold for his Rus opponent. I think. DFP was able to steal that in the end. Can I to see the Rus gold generation? Huh? Yeah, it's 115 for Matiz. I don't know if there is a way to see it in caster mode with the extended UI. Why Matiz's army value would shut up there. I suppose the tower probably counts towards that. There's 240, 140 from the two scouts and 100 from the while well, 315 is what involves 175 plus 140, eh? Yeah. Fair enough. So, a bit of a laid back start here. Our players, so we're going to go to age 2 and actually get a second town center on both sides here. No early barracks, age 1 fuckery, no early age 2 and Immediately push by the look of our players. The 
first prelate garrison there. Try and eke out as much empowerment as possible. So it looks like a Rus player. I'm going to gather out all the stone he can. So I think he's used one tick of gold there for stone. Yeah, he's used one tick of gold for stone, I believe. Or DFP. We gather all the gold. I mean, all the stone a little bit earlier with his villagers, but being able to do so. I have great empowerment of his wood gatherers there as the HRE player. The Rus player. The mechanic for the extra resources through the Golden Gate. They can generate gold into the other resources for an extra 50 of them, or vice versa. So it's like an improved market with a limit to the amount of uses you've got. So it is second town center. He's floated a little bit more stone. Nothing too crazy, only an extra 40 stone there. I mean, ideally you want to have that at about five. But DFP's done a really slick job at it. Only overgathered four stone there. Like, if you can get it to a single digit, that's perfect. There is, you know, sometimes you can get it to exactly zero, but it's quite hard to do. That's AOEO player territory, man. Anyway, early farms here. The ZFP does have continual empowerment of both the wood gatherers and anyone else gathering around here as well. So a great little early eco boon for our Rus player while our HRE player. I mean, for our Rus HRE player while our Rus player is having to rely on improved food gathering. At the moment, it is. So I'm in tier 1 still, so he's going to have to try and take this boar, which he's going to look to do, because this will give him an extra 5% on the uh, food gather rate, and also give him a slightly quicker trickle on the hunting cabins that he does have. Well, at the moment it's only the 1. So, caster mode. I didn't see DFP wasn't able to steal that, was he? No. No villagers have fallen there from it is, so that's been good for him. He can get on the war. Get all that food that he needs to go to Castle Age with. Because DFP will be gone there pretty quickly by the looks of it. is I'm just gonna always dump some of these ticks three of them turn 300 gold into 450 food which I think is what the plan is there so double stables finished up for our HRE player single stables for our Rus player Fortress actually empowering all the wood gathering there by 20%. I don't need these drop off points as well. And so you alternate an extra 17 or 18 drop off every villager, which is quite nice. Considering the HRE players got improved carry rate as well. Both our players, we've got Wheelbarrow, I actually missed the timing there, but I can assume that it was slightly quicker for the Rus player, considering they've got that early cabin. Whereas this mill, go down a little bit later, DFP, so textiles on the way for DFP, for villager health. Because it is early night production, available to the Rus player. Single barrack spear production will be able to ward off single stable night production. And 
Matizza's Castle Age has just kicked in. Well, DFP is getting his now, the Regnet's Cathedral. So both of these civs are going to really relish in early gold generation from Relics. Map control for the Sacred Sites. These warrior monks gonna. I think they train faster than they. Ah, no. it's half price for the warrior monks from the uh, Rus Abbey, while the HRE Cathedral is gonna allow for improved gold generation rate for every relic stored in it. So the earlier you can get on those relics, the more of them you can ascertain. The more gold trickling into your eco. Be careful because this mixed army production from the Rus player straight on crossbow, more knights and uh, spears. It's been quite hard for DFP to actually be nice and safe while he looks to just take all the relics. Saying that his own army production is going to be quite solid with double barracks, double stable, so have plenty of. Spears and knights of his own. You can even throw in some man at arms, but you gotta be a bit careful with crossbows. And if your opponent isn't making any archers, because if they make archers, you go man at arms, but if they're making crossbows, you probably actually want to add some more horsemen back in the mix. So, it's like a warrior monk's gone down, but more relics being picked up already by DFP. I don't know if there's really been an, I mean, more relics picked up by Mantis. Well, I don't know if DFP's actually managed to grab any yet. Let's so just snatch that one on the top right. Two more relics here for Matiz. These warrior monks really quick, and they actually do have a small attack, unlike other monk units. Not quite as good as a regular knight, but they do have a little bit of a charge attack to them. The DFP is really walling himself in. Has taken the one relic, but he needs to be actually make sure he garrisons it, not just runs the monk further around. He's invested in the wooden walls, which I'd like to help defend him, but at the same time, another investment while Matiz is just shooting out the army units. He's uh, up by about a dozen soldiers at the moment. And he's using his leftover warrior monks to try and get on all the sacred sites. He's missed. I think he'd already taken that relic with another warrior monk, and he's just missed rallying it straight onto this sacred site. But he can put some insane pressure and really trickle a little bit of extra gold here. And force his opponent to have to leave the turtle shell. One of the sacreds there goes to Matiz. And the beauty is if you leave a warrior monk there, your opponent can't just send another monk. They have to actually clear the monk out. Whereas if you send monks, obviously they don't attack, so... You generally send real units to go and clean things up. And you can't just rely on your opponent, you know, pulling his own monk back to keep it safe. There we go, so Matiz, gonna grab the central sacred. You're a little bit late there, mate. DFP has the prelate holding the relic. So, he's even given us a little bit of a wave. How are you, fella? Thing's probably getting a bit heavy, isn't it? Here we go, DFPs. Garrisoning the relic. I don't know if it'll give you the extra gold trickle um, from Regnets, because it's not actually... It's not actually in the cathedral, so... 
I don't believe it'll actually give him the bonus trickle. It just makes pushing harder because it offers... I think it's a 20 or 25... Yeah. 25% increased damage buff and 50% increased armor buff. Which is pretty big for outposts. It even gives them, I think, 25% increased range too. Which is fucking massive. But... Pretty sure the gold generation. Oh no, it might stack up to Regnet's value. All re ah, it's all relics now. Ah, okay. I thought it was all relics just in the cathedral, but that makes sense. But Matiz, this is a very impressive push. Going into it with a little bit of a bigger army, and he's certainly got a much bigger range element to his army of mostly crossbows. There are horsemen, though. Not just knights, so it's not going to be the most ugly of trades for DFP, but he doesn't really have any range element to his army at all. He is going to have to back off. I think that fight did go Matiz's way because he's now up in terms of the army value, uh, kills value, by quite an amount over 2,000. He's going to start chipping away at that town centre too. So the pressure's really on for DFP. He needs to find a way to strip these sacred sites off his opponent. Matisse hasn't really got a lot of wood, gener uh, wood gathering at the moment. DFP is also got a huge amount of money. And having to invest in gold ga oh, stone gathering at the moment. But one trebuchet is going to slowly work away at this town centre and DFP is either going to lose it or have to repair it. has shifted that relic back towards the Regnet's Cathedral. Which does leave the tower a little bit weaker, but it also means it's going to be easy for him to hold on to the relic. So, emergency repairs coming in. I don't quite save the town centre though, but it does give DFP enough time. Force Matiz to at least get a second trebuchet. Matiz is now starting to work towards a sacred victory, trying to wood wall as much of the map up as he can. If he can control that gold mine as well, he can really punish the HRE player. Because there's not really any available gold for DFP once this vein runs out, and he's only got the one relic. It's going to double trickle, but the HRE, I mean, the Rus player has the three relics and has all these set four relics and the sacred site control. So DFP needs to push, he needs to push fast somewhere. But Matiz is already up by the 50 pop, so by hanging back like this, he's sort of waiting on Matiz to throw the game away, and I don't know if that's gonna happen. Matiz is just gonna wait till he actually maxes out completely before he pushes. He's going to have a little bit in the bank before he pushes as well, which is ideal. You don't necessarily want to just max and shove straight away unless you know you can just outspend your opponent through it. But DFP really trailing in terms of the eco. I mean, in terms of the bank. Eco size is about the same as his opponent, but with that free gold trickle, it just doesn't have to worry so much about villager gold. He's shifting... The Treb's back nice and quickly. Not going to overstay. You see these guys in the back to engage, but... This is tough for DFP because the Manganel is actually exposed to some of the spears, so it is going to fall. And there's enough spears and crossbows. This is a very rough fight. For everything other than the uh, Horseman Lance Net to actually engage into, so all the Knights falling very quickly there, and even with this much range built up, and with no range element to your own army, no real siege element either, because that Manganel fell, 
DFP, it's been a rough fight for him. Don't know if he's going to be able to hold on from here. All segments not finished, so... Manganel's going to be exposed. Oh, and the Prelate. He's going to overextend and get himself killed too. DFP's starting to lose farms and villages. It's getting a bit do or die. He's going to have to retreat these guys and... Find a way to deal with the crossbows. GG. Which is taking game number two in the series, locking it up at one to one. With a huge anti-knight, anti-heavy armor composition there.